5,800 50 pounds, the extremely popular and well-executed 22 RBS Wildwood here at Haywood RV of Coldwater, Michigan. This, I think, is the definition of 10 pounds of couples camp and sugar in a five pound sack. We'll talk some highs and some lows along the way. It has, well, it's under 30 foot. It has an insane amount of storage, nice wide open living space. And if we're being fair, it does lack a little bit on door side windows, but that is the only box it does not check. And if you appreciate that kind of straightforward sh uh, chit chat at this thing, definitely hit the subscribe button, join along with us as we first dive into our Haylet in a hurry floor plan in a flash, and then we get into some more details. And I love this model. This this is an absolute nerd preferred model right here. It fits a lot of the boxes I'm looking to check. We've got a taller six foot nine ceiling. Um, I like the color palette. It's light but warm, uh, and it's an interesting size because you know it's under thirty feet. It's nicely half ton towable, uh, or even big SUVs, but it doesn't feel small because of the way that they have this. It's not like a full super slide, but it's like a two-thirds super slide. It really packs a lot of punch in here. And by getting that big 10.7 cubic foot 12 volt compressor fridge off the floor plan and out of the way, it just creates a nice wide open space right here with that you just you don't feel like you're tripping over one another, you know? Um, the uh, air ducts, as long as we're talking about uh, you know awesome things that are going on. This is, this is something nice. Not all campers do this. The air ducts can turn individually. They can close individually so that you always have really good control over what's going on with your airflow. And the entertainment in this model, I think, is fantastic. Because like if I come over here, if I sit right on the sofa, I think somebody's playing with the power jack outside, which is why the light's flickering. I am right on dead center boardwalk and park place. This is the definition of a no-neck wrecker entertainment center that we just, we, we love here at Halet RV. It's, we're people that use RVs, so we're people that look for stuff like this in RVs, and I think that's one of the benefits of working with a dealership like ours, is that you get a lot of actual, like, hey, we go camping too kind of information. Now, there's a lot going on, a little more than even meets the eye with the kitchen, so I wanna kinda take this in phases and waves. And although it doesn't really have anything to do with the kitchen, I do want to point out real quick this big sliding bedroom privacy door and an easily missed feature on it. And you have the same thing on the bathroom door. The bathroom has the same big sliding door. You can barely see the little plate there. There is a magnet catch on that so that it does kind of keep itself shut. So if like you just park real quick and the camper is not exactly like level, which speaking of which on these refrigerators, by the way, that is one of the other benefits of a 12 volt DC compressor fridge. The camper does not need to be dead on level for this thing to operate properly. Well, that door, if it happens, it won't. Well, now it won't slide open, but if it would have otherwise, that magnet plate will stop. I don't know that I necessarily explain that in the most eloquent way. I think that you pick up what I'm putting down though. That taller ceiling does allow them to put shelves in their overhead cabinets to really kind of maximize the capacity there. And I like the uh, you know cabinet bottom to countertop backsplash that wraps all the way around the wall here. If you notice, it even continues around that big uh, kitchen window. That is a uh, breeze through window, by the way. Now, all of the countertops in all of your Wildwoods will be a sealed edge press membrane. And that has become exceptionally common in the RV industry, especially in this segment, but I'm happy for it. I like it better than the T-molded stuff. And what's funny is it's basically the same material. It's just done in a different way. It's called thermal foil. And effectively, there is a little foil layer inside of that countertop that when heat is applied, it will cause that almost like Formica top to kind of to melt and form around the core of the countertop. And there you go. Now that it's all enclosed and kind of heat sealed, it does a heck of a job. And did you notice a couple little key details over here? Uh, plenty of outlets that are super easy to reach for appliances on the left and a digital thermostat just above that. And it is kind of incredible 
how rarely you do find digital thermostats in this segment or frankly in the RV industry in general because it's one of the most common upgrades. Like if you start Googling like, hey, what do I really need to do with my new RV? One of the first things everyone says is get a digital thermostat. It's just, they're just easier generally to operate. Now over here, you see that we've got a couple drawers and I like, if you look down below, you can see how there is handy like toe kick space. If you really want to belly up to the bar, like if you're cooking, if you're prepping, if you're doing dishes, you can put your toes right in there and it just makes it easier. It's, it's actually going to save a lot on back stress. Now, if you're noticing though, there's only two drawers and you're thinking, why didn't they take those all the way down to the floor? Over here around the corner, that is where our converter is located. In your house, you'd call that like your fuse box, basically. Uh, and now that countertop overhang, I love that they have the prep space there, but normally I would say, well, with that overhang, that would be just the perfect place for a wastebasket. But guys, here's the thing. Y'all ain't gonna need it unless you want it, basically. Because <laughs> you have a dedicated very nice wastebasket space built in right below the sink over here. Now you can see how there is a light in the oven so you can check on what's going on. And something I want to point out is the location of the sink in this one. So many RVs bury the sink dead in the prime area of your prep space. But notice, Wildwood has the sink over there and we already talked about the toe kick that lets you uh, access it more easily. And if you're paying attention, the sink is parallel with the front of the countertop, but it actually does get a little deeper behind. So if you want a little toaster corner or something back there, you got it. But no matter what, they always leave this nice wide open chunk of prep space right here. So if you, uh, you know, like you've got the single roll away dish drying rack cover over here. If you felt like doing some kind of double cover, like we've got those things in our, in our parts and service center. If you're handy with woodwork, you could easily make like a cutting board style below that high rise sprayer faucet. You've got the uh, recessed stove top over here. Well, all that stuff kind of can work together if you want one giant prep space. But no matter what, you've always got a good functional area and there's a good chunk of um dinette space uh tabletop space as well we haven't seen quite yet we will come back to the entertainment center when we're checking out the sofa but i want to look at what's behind it because this is like almost like a walk-in closet but it, it's almost like a uh, extra large kind of half walk-in pantry if you really really had to there is enough space in here if i was playing hide and seek with my kiddo i could hide in here I'd have to suck in the dad gut, but I could make it work. And these cabinets, I like that they didn't make them quite the full depth of the uh, pantry here because they'd be too deep, even for my long arms, especially that top shelf. My wife would have a hard time reaching that. So they made them not too deep. But you know what else that opens up the opportunity for? If you wanted to put something like a broom hanger on the wall here, a couple coat hangers, whatever, you could do it. Now, here's another really cool thing in these wildwoods. This, this is not just tape over this wall panel to this wall panel seam. This is covering a seam between wall panels. They have upgraded this to a click in place like plastic T-mold that has a, uh, a print applied to it that matches the wall paneling. So the reason I think this is important is when it gets hot and cold, kind of like the way you can steam a stamp off an envelope and my hands are filthy, but hey, if your hands aren't getting dirty, you're not doing work, right? Anyway. If you steam the uh, stamp off an envelope, this, if it was just a sticker tape piece of paper, could curl and fall off. That is going nowhere. Another thing I kind of thought about, down there right by the door, that is Shoe Garage Central right there. That is the place for shoes. Um, here's a little pro tip from your Uncle Josh. And if you appreciate little facts like this, please hit the subscribe button and follow along with us. Uh, Thankfully, we just don't seem to need to use our fire extinguishers. But here's what you should do. And frankly, it's not a bad idea to do it before each trip. Is before you leave on your camping trip, take the fire extinguisher off there, grab it, and shake and bake it. Because they basically have a powder in them that if you don't keep it kind of busted up, the fire extinguisher is not going to work. Now, I hope you never need it. And frankly, ladies and gentlemen, if you ever do encounter that really scary scenario where there does happen to be a fire in here, don't be a hero. Get out of the camper, okay? You only need to use that fire extinguisher like if you have to use it real quick to get in, save someone's life, and get out. Don't be... You're not a firefighter, and if you are, that you know as well as I do that little extinguisher is not going to do everything you need it to do in here. So, anyway, just a little kind of PSA from Uncle Josh, the RV nerd. Now, in here, man, we got some just 
bright light flooding in from outside washing out the camera. But I did want to point out that even here in the bedroom, they're still using these nice blackout kind of roller shades. And again, they go down way past the window. Now over here, you can see we do have TV hookups on the wall. So if you want to put a little pivot mount, if you're so inclined, you can. And I like how that window is tall. So if you're laying in bed and hear a funky noise, you know, something in the neighborhood, Ghostbusters, you can uh, peek out there, see what's going on. Now, in a full Wildwood, you will have a uh, full overhead cabinet in addition to the dual mirrored hanging towers. Um, one quick note, uh, people ask all the time. This is a Camp Queen, by the way. I, I don't want to make any mistake. However, Wildwood uh, specifically builds their models to be true queen capable. So if you do want to upgrade to a true queen 60 by 80 walk around bed, you can. But if you don't need the longer bed, it just makes the whole room look and feel larger. And either way, you'll always have room to walk around it. So there's there's benefits both ways, and Wildwood really gives you the ability to choose what works best for you. Now we're going to take a look at some sweet underbed storage in a moment. But first, take a look over here. You see how there's that little cutaway viewing porthole pocket in the side of our hanging towers? If you look inside of there, you see there's actually household power outlets inside in the bottom of the closet, down below where it's going to interfere with any hanging clothes and there's USB plugs on the outside. You will find this on both sides of the bed and they basically have an integrated CPAP storage compartment. So you can have your machine inside, out of the way, out of public view if you have guests and have your big sliding door open. You can run everything out of there or you could have phone chargers. I mean, you could do a little bit of anything that you need to. You could keep a little handy flashlight in there, all kinds of stuff. And then, Cue the Legend of Zelda sound. And the mystery revealed here is multi-fold. First of all, if you need to, if your cargo shifts in the front full pass-through compartment, you can step in here, you can get in, wrestle, organize, do whatever you have to do with this stuff. Or once again, you could use it as a sweet hide-and-seek place for the kiddos. But down below here, you've got a like shoe garage shelf below the foot area of the bed. But then you have these handy little lightweight, inexpensive, simple, but smart and amazingly effective cube organizers that Wildwood puts in here. And this is where I've really started to feel that Wildwood has some of the best in class storage available out there of anybody. It's just, they've they've really gone above me on like the Versa Lounge, the kitchen, that pantry. You haven't even seen the bathroom. This camper is small and has huge storage. So in a way, this could be like your, your dresser space. You could use it for kiddo toys, dog toys, really. You could put a little bed up there and have a little cat bed. Because I know, I talk a lot about dog camping. I know that not everybody's a dog camper. I know there's plenty of cat campers out there. Actually, if you are a cat camper, leave a little hashtag cat camper down in the uh, comments. <laughs> little uh, look at the uh, sliding privacy door. Now... The uh, entertainment, we already kind of had a direct view look of that. And again, uh, seeing it more from a uh, you know third-party perspective rather than sitting directly on the sofa first person as we were. Uh, if you do choose to add a TV to it, man, it's just it's about as easy as it gets. And I feel pretty confident you could put a 40-incher up there pretty easily if need be. Now, down below, they have like a little extra shelf where if you want to do things like, you know, put a little phone charger station or uh, expand your entertainment, because this Bluetooth soundbar also does have HDMI plug and uh, USB plug, and there's an HDMI port on the back. That's why these little guys are here. If you wanted to run a USB plug through the cabinet so that it was basically, it looked like you cut the cord and it was uh, near wireless up here for your entertainment center, it'd be easy to do that. Or you could run your power cord down through there, as it were. Our electric space heating fireplace is going to take some nip out of the air. And I guess that is a little shoe garage down below, but I think with what we have going on in that closet pantry, you just you couldn't ask for more. Uh, a couple quick notes. Like we do have, I don't know if I've mentioned it, there's a full LED accent light above the slide. And it's not that I dislike the blue lights that come in a lot of these RVs, but I like that they went with white instead of disco blue. And, they, you know, there's nothing wrong with it again, but it's just, it does lighten, brighten it up in here. And the blue light isn't for everybody and you could turn it off, but what's the point of having the light if, you know, you can't use it? Now this thing over here, the, the thing with this is it's a mini version of their Versa Lounge. Actually, this is kind of one of the things that spurred the creation of the full Wildwood Versa Lounge. This came before it a little bit. And just like the full Versa Lounge, it's like a jackknife, super sofa, Swiss Army couch. It, it only does everything. 
And first thing, right down below the main seating here, you'll see that this thing is just loaded with storage space. The whole thing opens up and it really creates just an absolute ton of storage capacity. Like it's Big Brother, the full Versa Lounge, this little mini Versa Lounge has three of these big totes right here that are food safe containers. And I'll tell you where they're really handy is like, um, if you kind of want to use them for like long-term clothing storage, or maybe if you're somebody who's going to camp with a grandkid, it's nice to have an extra place to put their stuff. And speaking of guests, if you notice this big long sofa, it'd be great for just laying down and taking a nap, but the whole thing basically folds into one giant bed as well. And this thing is huge. Whether you're using it as just a grandkid sleeper, or as a big adult sleeper, it's gonna get the job done. You know, about the time I go run in my mouth and I end up in the doghouse, I could still spend a pretty good night here. And compared to last year, Wildwood has bulked up and improved the density of their uh, memory foam inside their seating. And it's subjective, but I certainly think my fat butt's a lot more comfortable on here than it used to be. And I, I tell you, whether it's for keeping the sun out during the daytime or being comfortable while sleeping at night, feeling like you have privacy, the blackout roller shades with the, the top and the side kind of boxing on those windows really does a heck of a job. Now, something that's cool is how far past the window you can actually pull these. And another thing that's kind of cool, come back here, is how they have a really bright white layer on the back of that shade. But what that's going to do for us, ladies and gentlemen, is if the sun is beating against that window, it will do wonders toward repelling the sun to making this a little more comfortable. So we've seen, obviously, it can seat us. It can sleep us. It's got tons of storage. So the question begs, uh, where do you eat? And the short answer is right here in the exact same place. The long answer. Remember that tote that slid out of this end of this big L lounge right over here? Well, there's a little shelf below that, if you noticed. That is where the tabletop slots into. So even by adding that little shelf there, they've really minimized the amount of storage space that you, I guess, you know, quote unquote, would lose as a result of this by building in like a, a purpose-built slot for this table. The little, uh, you know, arm can just rest up in that same place. And it's, it's pretty darn sturdy. We have had no problems with these things. And I think one of the reasons is that Wildwood made it really easy to get into and out of this. Now, first of all, notice how the table doesn't bump right up against the refrigerator. This is a little bit longer, wider slide than many brands who build a very similar floor plan. And that doesn't mean they're bad campers. I think it just means that Wildwood might have executed this a little bit better. And here is one of the reasons that I think that. Because the table can still pivot. So uh, if you want to have it more in a general dining mode, you can. If you want to set this up as more of like a, a movie time lounger like this with kind of a center console, you can do that too. Um, you know, if you want to twist the table and put some extra chairs around it for board game times, there's just, there's just, they call it a, a versa lounge. I think they should call it a universal lounge because that's pretty much what it is. It, it only does everything. And of course, we can always open all these window shades and just let in like a blinding flood of light through that epic panoramic window. Notice the seat side breeze window there. Nice little touch. Once again, the same sliding privacy door with little magnet catch plate. Here's a better look at it uh, from what we talked about in the bedroom. But uh, the bathroom here, this is huge. You know, again, it's a smaller RV. It's under 30 feet, fits that half ton or bigger SUV towability package. But every room in this feels big. Bedroom storage is big. Kitchen storage is big. We have ourselves a very tall, nerd-friendly shower over here with that six foot nine ceiling. The skylight is actually an optional piece of equipment. That's something that we like to add here at Halid RV for a little more ambient light. Thankfully, in a full Wildwood, the shower surround paneling is standard. In an X-Lite, that is actually optional. They've gone with just an easy step-in shower. Pardon my footprints in there. The good news, you won't see them when you take this RV home because we clean every RV inside and out at no additional charge to you. And that's along with showing you how it works. Propane, battery, water, electric surge guards at Halid RV. We do that on all new RVs, no hidden fees. I mean, is there a, is there a more, we'll say, fluffy, friendly toilet arrangement here? I don't care if you're big in the hips, thick in the shoulders, whatever it might be. You got space around this thing. And over here in the corner, we have ourselves next to that breeze window, some great linen storage. But guys, that's really only just the start of the storage in here. 
sliding in here to give you a look. It's basically as deep as the shower. So, uh, you know, whether you got lots of towels, you got toiletries, you got body wash, shampoos, all kinds of stuff. Now, we've already seen this thing has some pretty awesome storage, but if I actually step here uh, <clears throat> in the shower with you, you can see we've got uh, like tons more. Now, what's great is this is hanging closet space on the left, but if you want to put some shelving organizer units in it, you absolutely can. And just like the rest of the RV, you still have sealed edge press membrane countertops. And look how below that thing, they just left every ounce of open storage space they possibly could. So once again, you can tow smaller and pack larger in this Wildwood from Halet RV. And a quick look at some slide closed functionality. That is maybe the one area you could say that this RV has a little bit of a hiccup, but I don't know that it's that major of a deal. Um, if you uh, close the slide like you see, you can get up here through the kitchen. You can get down to that cabinetry. The overhead cabinetry is no sweat. The refrigerator though, because this has that extra large countertop section, the fridge is really not accessible. You can get to the freezer. What is nice though is because they do have a big sliding door, not a swinging door, you can easily get back here to the bathroom. And of course that closet pantry that we saw that's to our left right now as we speak, well that's never going to be really hard to reach any time. And a quick little generic bit of footage here that applies to any triple entry step Wildwood. They've recently swapped over from LCI stable steps to Moride. I don't necessarily feel because one is better than the other, but Moride has enhanced their step pin system here in a way that I think is awesome. And this is like what I call Wildwood doing Rockwood things. This is a really high class feature. So instead of the push pins, you gotta wiggle jiggle, line them up, and it's not hard, it's just annoying. You just boop, and that will retract the leg. Now, I'm doing this all with one hand. It is not difficult by any stretch of the imagination. I do recommend you do it with two hands. Now, while the step is dangling here, that's all it takes. Now it's locked in place. It has never been easier to keep your steps sturdy, stable, and adjusted to each individual campsite than it is right now. And outside here you see under that bed a huge pass-through compartment. And again, it doesn't have to cost a lot to be nice. Wildwood's really the definition of that. They're the definition of doing the most with the least money, basically. Uh, little things like, uh, you know, having a little spot for our jack cranks. Then you see how they include that little hex nut drill adapter right there. Well, that is what we kind of tongue-in-cheek call the cordless jack system here at Halet RV. Instead of uh, power uh, jack, quote, upgrade, which I get the power jacks are simpler. They're easier. You push the button and, and you're done. The button with a P? Yeah, we're going to go with that today. Anyway, um, the, uh, you know, a 12 or 18 volt drill can put those jacks up and down like a NASCAR driver. It is faster. It is uh, actually what's interesting, more stable for a few reasons. First of all, those manual jacks on Wildwoods are rated for more weight than most scissor jacks on almost anything else in this class. They have extra heavy duty corner jacks for additional stability. Couple that with those more ride stable steps. And then did you see that yellow bar attached to the jack leg? That is a strong arm stabilizer jack leg. They have those on the front and rear jacks. And this will feel like it has the stability of an automatic leveling system when the jacks are down. Here's the trick, guys. You lose that when you go to the power jack, quote, upgrade. I almost want to call it a power jack swap, even though it is extra money. Um, you, you lose stability. You gain the convenience of just pushing a button. I don't know that either is better. I know that I prefer my RV to be sturdy and stable on a campsite, and that's why we tend to build these this way. But guys, are we doing it right? Leave us a little comment, let us know. Manual jacks, power jacks, uh, you know, assuming the different stability factors and the fact that you save some money with the manuals, you know, which way would you go if you were building this? Up front here, power tongue jack is standard thankfully uh, as is that nice hard shell propane cover now we uh, unfortunately are not demonstrating this properly but this little plastic bracket over here on the tongue that is what I'm gonna call the plug buddy but it's also where you could hook up your seven-way safety chains uh, seven-way safety chains seven-way plug and your safety chains good lord um, <laughs> we're doing it live anyway 
you get the idea. So they're not dragging in the dirt. Now room for a couple batteries back here, a handy 12 volt battery disconnect so that when the RV is in storage, you can make sure that that uh, refrigerator is not going to murder your batteries. But that fridge can be manually turned off inside. Um, every 12 volt fridge I've seen has some way to turn off. They're just not always like super obvious. Uh, sometimes in this one, what you have to do is like just hold the button for like 10 seconds, which is a long time, but they want to make sure you're not accidentally turning the power off. Now, if you're looking up top here, a little difficult to tell, so I got to get close. You see those brackets at the top of the slide? Wildwoods are pre-prepped for slide awnings, which if the structure is, a lot of people say, well, isn't there a big header beam above the slide where you could mount the slide awning to? Yes, against the body of the camper there is. But a lot of RVs slide faces are not structured to be able to accept a slide awning. You won't have that problem here. And all full Wildwoods have this corrugated like belly shield called the accessibility right here. It is a heated enclosed belly. That is the exact same kind of belly protection that you get in something like a luxury Forest River fifth wheel. So that is, that's again, a higher class feature that you're getting here at, I guess what a lot of people call a more conventional class, but that's the thing with Wildwood. They are, I think, one of the best examples of what I call smarter class camping out there. We do have a uh, black tank flush on the rear corner here. And notice how all of our hookups are on the rear corner. The uh, camper is uh, backup camera prepped. The uh, construction here, we have a 3 8 fully walkable roof with 16 inch on center roof and wall studs, 12 inch on center average floor studs with a 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor deck. Now that is the same general construction outline as a uh, J-Flight Catalina um, Cherokee. A J-Flight will have a plywood roof deck and a little heavier roof uh, rating. But guys, this is like a 2,800 pound roof rating. I, I don't think that that's like insufficient by any stretch of the imagination. Now someone might say they could have put a little bit bigger awning in here. The trick is you have that big bedroom window that you're contending with and you can't just as a manufacturer order an awning by the inch. They come in specific sizes. So they did put the biggest awning on it that they were able to do. Now here is an easier look at the uh, strong arm stabilizer jack legs that uh, we talked about earlier. You can get a much better view of them off the back here. We already had a little peek at the Moride stable steps when we first stepped outside. That is. I've been waiting for something like that. Folks, maybe you've had a, a camper with stable steps. In that time, I have manipulated thousands of stable steps. Getting rid of those pins, Moride's my best friend right now. I, <laughs> I, can't even, I can't even tell you how happy that made me when I saw it. The uh, extra large entry handle here, standard feature, gets us in and out more easily. And these are on a friction hinge, not gonna slam against the side of the door. Not gonna do it, wouldn't be prudent at this juncture. And notice how they do have a handy little rubber stopper here so that it's not gonna bang against the metal. Now, if you really wanted to, they do install a backer inside the wall structure. You could mount a TV bracket out here, personally. And maybe it's because of my lack of skill with power tools. I am a keyboard and mouse computer nerd through and through. Absolutely. I might have grown up white tailed deer hunting and four wheel riding, but I just, I just became a house mouse, if that makes sense, guys. I'm not real comfortable drilling holes through my aluminum, but if that's your cup of tea, knock it out. I just bring a portable picnic table and I'd set my thing up outside. So what's the word from the nerd here? What's the uh, nerd verdict as it were? Well, absolutely nerd preferred. The only downside that I can find to this one is that it just has a little bit of a lack of door side windows, but I don't care. When I want to be inside this RV, it has all the space that I want. And when I want to see outside, I'm going to be outside. That's the way that I camp. And maybe you camp differently. And if this isn't the right RV for you, no sweat. We only have hundreds of other options here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And whether you need hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery and everything between, the only thing we don't do is hidden dealer fees. Sorry for the convenience. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.